This is Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. We just had an election in New Jersey, although the polls show most people didn't even know about the election. However, the Democrats picked up four seats in the assembly. It was a big win for the Democrats, and it was a big win especially for the Democrats in Monmouth County. And Vin Gopal is the chair of the Monmouth County Democratic Party. First of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. So uh, how big of a win was this? First time in 24 years that the 11th legislative district, which covers 18 towns in Monmouth County, it's a Monmouth County district, it doesn't go through many counties, uh, has Democratic representatives. Uh, first time since 1991. And both Republicans, the, the incumbents, lost. And who were the new assembly people? Uh, their names are Eric O'Talling, who's the mayor of Neptune. He's a 40-year electrician. Uh, in fact, the day after he won, the next morning, 6 a.m., he went out on a job, uh, really connected with a lot of people as a working-class individual. And Joanne Downey, uh, she's from Freehold Township, a former deputy state attorney general, uh, daughter of a state trooper, young mother who's uh, an attorney and advocate. And they really worked very hard and, uh, and, and had a clear victory. The Democrats picked up four seats. Correct. Two of them were in Monmouth County. Yes. And so everybody was talking about Monmouth County. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of the, the, the reality of Monmouth County is people assume it's a Republican county. It's the county, along with Ocean County, why Chris Christie became governor twice. Uh, he won uh, by over 110,000 votes in Monmouth and Ocean County. And when he, when he lost to John Corzine in 2009 by three percentage points, Monmouth and Ocean County was that reality. When he ran for re-election in 2013, he won this legislative district with more than 70% of the vote. The Republican incumbents that year won by more than 9,000 votes just two years ago. It was an historic low turnout. Yes. And the, uh, the Rutgers-Eagleton poll beforehand showed that most people didn't even know there was an election. Yes. I was trying to figure out who that helps. Uh, does it help the parties? Does it help the person with the highest registration? Does it give the opportunity to the people without the highest registration? I still couldn't figure it out. You know, you have a big pool of voters. Nobody really knows it's an election. It's funny when we're calling people, they think that it's the presidential election. It's not till next year. Why are you bothering us? Uh, uh, most people don't even know, let alone what an assembly person does. So these are the challenges that both parties face. Uh, so it, it's really a challenge for both parties to get out their base, to really drag them to the polls, make phone calls, get them out of their doors. And I think it was a pretty equal challenge for both sides. Whose fault is that? Is it the parties? Is it the media? Is it a combination? It's, it's a combination. It's a, it's a combination of uh, uh, basic education and civics that people don't know. Is it apathy? It's apathy. People are frustrated with government. We see that at the presidential level. But people don't even know what an assembly person does. They don't know what their mayor and council people do, how that has a greater impact on their lives than the president or Congress. And this is a real education process that we need to start with students at a young age on why civics is important. I'll get to what it means in a second, but I want to tell you what the Republicans say happened in Monmouth County. Sure. They're saying that uh, Democrats targeted the district, they poured a lot of money in the district, that they were outspent three to one, I think they were saying, that there was a lot of union money that came in and gerrymandering played into this. All of those combinations together caused yeah. you to win. Uh, those are convenient excuses. The Monmouth County Republican Party gets a significant amount of union money. There are super PACs and third party organizations on both Did sides. Did you outspend them though? We probably outspent them at the end of the day, probably uh, about one and a half to one. Uh, but we're going up against eight year incumbents uh, who honestly at the end of the day, they took the, the district for granted. Uh, they told a group of constituents, uh, one of the assembly members, Car Ca Carolyn Cassegrand, who lost, told her constituents uh, a few weeks before the election, uh, I don't even know why you endorse the other side, I'm going to win anyway. So they had a sense of entitlement, uh, that they belonged there, and, and at the end of the day, they did not do their job over the last eight years in convincing the residents of the district that they needed to be returned. Do you spend money on an election like this on polling? Did you know what was going to happen? Yeah, we polled uh, with the leadership of the, the Democratic Assembly Campaign Committee, with the leadership of the Speaker and Assembly Majority Leader. We polled just about every week for the last month. Yeah, I apologize yeah. for the word waste. That was the no, wrong no, word. No I just know that in yeah. some races, you, you, they don't spend money for polling. Yeah, no, we, the, we did a lot of polling. Data is important. It's important to understand what voters uh, care about. It's important to understand what voters want. And that's the only way you're going to have good representatives. So, so did you see this coming? Uh, we felt it was coming. In fact, the executive director of the Assembly Democrats, uh, uh, Michael Muller, who ran the campaign the day before the election, said you're going to have a two, a two new Assembly people in the 11th District. So he called it the day before. How much, a lot of people are saying this is a referendum on the governor. Is it? 
uh, he didn't help. Uh, the governor came in a week before, flew in from Iowa to come down to New Jersey to do a $2,600 per head fundraiser for the two incumbents. So the Republicans knew they had a problem because the governor wasn't coming in for anybody anywhere else in the state to do a $2,600 per head fundraiser. Uh, his numbers were always low. Uh, people have felt that he has checked out, and that uh, that hasn't helped. But at the end of the day, despite the governor's issues, you had two incumbents here that were unable to convince their district that they needed to be returned. Yeah, but you didn't answer the question. I mean, you're saying he didn't help. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are saying this is a referendum on him, that this was uh, dissatisfaction with him. I, I don't think it was ultimately a referendum on him, but the problem is when the governor uh, had vetoes, the, he, the Republican members of the Senate Assembly went along with him, and they want the, the voters, the residents of New Jersey, want people on both sides of the aisle that are going to be independent, that if they, if they vote one way, that they vote their conscience, not that they just override vetoes, uh, vote to not override vetoes. So they'll vote one way on women's health care, the governor vetoes it, and then they forget their original vote. So voters saw a, a continuing argument that these, these guys just did whatever Chris Christie told them. They had no uh, opinion of their own, and that's the bigger problem. How will it affect people's lives in this new session? What are the issues at stake? Property taxes, uh, the uh, health care issues, job growth, small business growth. This is a governor uh, that slashed UEZ funding for uh, municipalities in this district, Long Branch and Asbury Park, which helped numerous small businesses and the previous incumbents that are there until January did nothing to stop that. So I'm confident that Assemblyman-elect Totaling and Assemblywoman-elect Downey, they're gonna be focused on how to get uh, small businesses up and running, how to get tax credits, how to, how to really be aggressive. So when, when you see vacant storefronts on major highways, that you don't just sit back, that they work with local municipal officials, work with partners and figure out how to get people back to work. I think that's what people care about. But although you picked up four seats, you're not veto-proof. We're not veto-proof, but uh, hopefully this sends a message to a couple of Republicans that are on the fence that it's okay to cross over, that you don't have to do what a governor who's not even in New Jersey right now, who's in Iowa and New Hampshire, is telling you to do, uh, that you can do what you believe is right, whether it's, whether it's gun control, whether it's health care, whether it's creating jobs, that you don't have to do what he's doing, which is appealing to a far-right element so he can try to get elected president. Congratulations Thank again. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming in. When are Thanks you for running? having me. I'm not running for anything. Oh, come Thanks. on. <laughs> Vin Gopal is Thank the you. chair of the Monmouth County Democratic Party. When we come back, we'll talk about the fastest growing municipality in the state of New Jersey and why a specific group is complaining about that when Jersey Matters continues.